before Leonardo DiCaprio hit the beach. His daring performances made him one of Hollywood's more respected actors, while his movie success made him one of the planet's most famous young men. The buzz began on What's Eating Gilbert Grape, where DiCaprio earned a Best Supporting Oscar nod for his unhinged and endearing turn as Johnny Depp's mentally challenged brother. Go call Tucker in the basement. Go down there, Gilbert. Your problem? Dad's in there! Ooh. William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet established DiCaprio as a romantic icon, both timeless and contemporary. In my heart, love until now, for I never saw true beauty till this night. But it was Titanic, James Cameron's self-described $200 million chick flick that made Leo a household word. I'm the king of the world! Amid the agonies of a stress-filled shoot, DiCaprio carved out a character that a worldwide audience placed alongside the cinema's most memorable. In the process, he became a figure of 24-7 interest to millions. Now Leo hits the beach, the film version of Alex Garland's novel about a young traveler searching for heaven on earth and finding it on an island in Thailand. Even as the beach hits theaters, DiCaprio, now 25, takes issue with the party boy image a 15-month movie-making hiatus hung on him. I take what I do extremely seriously, you know what I mean? I put every ounce of effort into what I do, and it is my craft, and it is my art, and it is my profession, and it's what I'm passionate about as a human being, you know? So when that kind of stuff does get upsetting when they seem to think that, you know, because I took that amount of time off after Titanic that I was slacking off, when in fact, you know, I was really looking for something that I connected with. This is the first film that struck a chord. I mean, I felt thematically said something about society. One kilometer. Two. Three, two. I don't know. I'm thinking miles, not kilometers. I'm American. So? So let's go. He's selfish in the way that he always thinks the grass is always going to be greener on the other side. He, he achieves one goal. He gets the girl. He gets to sleep with the girl. He finds paradise. But nothing is ever good enough. I really identify with that aspect within him. He's somebody that is constantly striving for more and never satisfied with what he actually has. How much does this feel like you in the sense of a guy who's had an enormous amount of experiences, can, you know, can pretty much have his choice as to what movie he does next and yet is continually searching for something new and different? Well, you know... <laughs> <laughs> the eyes got to have staff and... <laughs> well, no, I'm selfish in the sense that I'm constantly wanting to strive and grow as an actor and, and expand what I do and want to constantly take more and more chances. The good thing now is that I've been given a lot of great opportunities, you know, because of the success of mainly Titanic, but it's given me a lot of great opportunities to really show what I think I can do and try to do some, some bursts of interesting films along the way and play some interesting characters. Less interesting to Leo was the mega fame that descended upon him in the wake of Titanic. During that period of time, I couldn't go to Barnes and Noble and pick up a book, you know, like how to be how to be famous for dummies, you know what I mean? There was nothing like that that I could, you know, conceivably read and understand. Basically, I had to learn for myself and make my own mistakes and understand, you know, certain things about what it's like, but I chose to, you know, sort of fight against it and say to myself, I'm not going to be a hermit. I'm going to live my life that I'm going to lead and, you know, do what I want to do and, and screw what people are saying because I, I, I believe that during that period of time with that whole hot air balloon of Titanic that people were going to say something no matter what, even if it was made up or not. So you got to just leave your life together. Adapt. He wasn't afraid to say no, even to the Oscars, which he did not attend, despite Titanic's 14 nominations. I don't really feel comfortable with those types of things. I just don't. I don't know. I don't. I, I, that was, well... Besides the obvious reason that I wasn't nominated, which is one. <laughs> <laughs> Did that disappoint you? No, it didn't, actually. It didn't. I mean, I I was in complete acceptance of that. I understood, you know what I mean? Just the way things happen sometimes. How about people interpreting it as a diss to some of the people you work with, or to Jim Cameron in particular? Well, they're wrong. Why are they wrong? Because I think that... Uh, you know, even though Titanic was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do as far as the film is concerned, on every level, you know, one of the most difficult things I had to do, hard work pays off. The hard work yanked his feet at $20 million, 
But despite the huge audience that adored Jack Dawson, DiCaprio won't shy away from hard-edged or occasionally violent characters, like the beach's lying, less-than-lovable Richard. Those kind of things you can't take into account when choosing a character or any other film of any kind. I can only do what I feel is compelling to me, and I, I, I would never... I would never choose, you know, the roles that I do just because I think it might upset somebody else. Leo drinks blood, eats worms, and kisses underwater. We had to give each other signs that she was, like, choking, so we had to, like, lift her back up. All that and more when we come back. Road to the Beach, which co-stars French siren Virginie Ledoyen, began at the Cannes Film Festival, where Leo first met Danny Boyle, director of the hip hit Train Spotting. I thought that film stood out as one of the uh, most eccentric, unbelievable movies that I'd ever seen in my life. I mean, it really took so many chances, especially with its surreal moments that took you out of reality. Besides that, I thought he was one of the more talented directors that I'd ever seen. I mean, all he said to me when we started is he said, all I, please, 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 just don't make it like Titanic. <laughs> so, so you think, oh, great, thanks very much. No, no problem about that. DiCaprio proved eager to take a chance on the beach with its dark tale of a young man's search for paradise on Earth, leading to passion, pain, and bloodshed. Danny Boyle wanted to bring me in and collaborate with me on the, on the whole concept of the film and really bring me in like a partner more so than any other, any other movie that I was a part of and that was encouraging. I think he's very keen to show that he has got range as, a, as an actor, you know, and that people who see him as a young romantic lead also need to know that there's a huge uh, range of ability that he can show as an actor. You get that light out of my face. You're a peach! Damn it! What's that for? Look! I have to stay up here! That's okay. Thank you for making my life just perfect. Super! Damn it! You are such an idiot. Leonardo locked into the beach's cultural critique as well. Places are losing their their own identity more and more throughout the world, and that's what this character goes in search of something tangible, a real sort of experience that's under the surface of what he sees that's set up for a tourist. Do you think that's a peculiarly Western thing at this point, though? Don't you think the people of Thailand actually genuinely want to have oh, like, I, Bob Marley songs and Michael Jordan posters? And I, all I don't stuff? disagree with that. I don't don't disagree that there is a demand. I mean. Uh, everything about American culture is in high demand wherever you go in the entire world. So it's not, it, it, it's not that I'm saying that we're bad for doing any of it. It's just the inevitable. Places are losing their own identity. They're so influenced by our television and movies and media, and especially with like the worldwide communication that we have now. It's just going to even uh, go further in that direction. DiCaprio himself wanted to go further. When it came time to shoot a scene atop a commanding cliff. There, we can't jump there. We can't jump. We're not gonna jump. Oswald! We'll jump. You didn't jump, did you? Did you jump? No, I, I wanted to. Guillaume Canet, the, the coach of the French fan movie, and I wanted to jump off that cliff, but... For insurance reasons, we weren't able to. You couldn't, like, take Danny aside and say, Come I on. did. <laughs> I said, let me jump, man, please. But he didn't let me. Did he take you aside and say, please let me do it? <laughs> Not that I remember. I but... did, actually. <laughs> yeah, like you did. <laughs> there, please let me do that. <laughs> How did that caterpillar fit? Uh, it spun a little web in my mouth that was a little annoying, but we had to do it like 20, over 20 times, so I had a lot of caterpillars in my mouth. 
Any dipping sauce? No barbecue or anything like no, that? No, but Just the like... snake blood sequence was disgusting. That was disgusting. Yeah, it was. It really was for me, too. I mean, I, I came close to vomiting because it's basically this red caramel. Oh, God, it was, it was horrible. But I had to drink literally like a pitcher full of it. And after a while, it was disgusting, man. Drinking that stuff is absolutely unbelievable. But um, he did it, thank God, and he stayed on his feet afterwards, which wasn't guaranteed. <laughs> For one intimate scene, DiCaprio and his Parisian co-star had to get off their feet and take off their clothes. You're willing to submit yourself to a couple of love scenes in this movie. Were they uncomfortable to shoot or were they, were they fun? They're always uncomfortable to shoot. This one was underwater too, especially, so we had to weigh ourselves down and like I didn't know how long she could stay underwater and how, you know, so... <laughs> We had to give each other signs that she was like choking, so we had to like lift her back up. That was really romantic. Yeah, it, was. it was fantastic. It was tough because kissing underwater, you can breathe. It's not the easiest thing to do, really. But um, but it was very funny because you know we get up, we came out of the water. We went, Let's do it again. Okay, okay. Leo had these kind of trunks on to begin with, these swimming shorts. We had to line them with lead weights. So if you look at it very carefully, it looks like he's got a huge bulge <laughs> in his trousers, which I can assure everybody is the lead weight, so I think it is anyway. The skimpy attire required for the beach scenes drove both actors into the training room. Did you make this guy go to the gym, or did you go to the gym all by yourself for this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I made myself, too. <laughs> when you realize you're going to be on a beach for four months with your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> got to be something about it. Were you pleasantly surprised at what you saw when he took his shirt off? Did you know he was working out? Oh, oh, um, I, I was, um, I have to be careful here. I was delighted when he took his shirt off. <laughs> but that's what I'm about to say. That's what's amazing about uh, American actors is they get, they get into a part and they just follow a kind of route down to that part, which involves everything about their mental preparation and their physical preparation. In some of the footage that we see, they're like taking light readings on your stomach and stuff, and they're really <laughs> right on that. What was that like for you to have your physical self being so carefully photographed and exposed? Before the shooting, I was quite anxious. So I have to do some preparation, do a diet, and blah, blah, blah. And, <laughs> Lots and of sit-ups. Exactly, I set up everything before. And finally, when we were on this island, we were about like, four, like 30 actors, like 20 girls. And you forget it completely, and you leave in bathing suits all day long. Leo discusses his future. I like Star Wars. I thought, I, I, you know, I love, I love the, the first three, and the, the last one's all right, you know. I don't know. When we come back. A couple months, maybe, maybe a year even. No, I like it out here, you know, things are different. No, I'll call again. I'll call again, I promise. Okay. All right, bye. Forget it. What? You'll laugh. You'll scream. You'll love this movie. What's your favorite scary movie? Scream 3. Rated R. Now playing everywhere. Leonardo DiCaprio's recent films have all been mainstream hits, but his personal taste is more edgy, not just in movies, but in music. I've always really been into hip-hop and stuff like that. What speaks to you about the music just in general? What do you like about it? It's just raw, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, the, it's just what I grew up with, you know what I mean? Much like anything else, it's what I... I was never into rock and roll or anything like that. I actually hated that whole 80s, much like I think many other people did that whole sort of 80s glam rock phase that happened with them. Never liked one song from Guns N' Roses or anything like that. And rap music just struck a chord in me, I suppose. His birthday parties over the years have featured performances from Slick Rick, A Tribe Called Quest, Q-Tip, and RZA from the Wu-Tang. I said, I've been on for, you know, happy birthday, my pleasure. Rock, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You can talk when you go. Nah. I met him before Titanic, you know what I mean? So, because nah, after Titanic, we couldn't touch him. Huh. 
no doubt now. Uh, yeah. Check it out now. You spent time with Tiff and Rizza and stuff. What? A lot of guys want to spend time with you. What do you enjoy about these guys' work and what makes it fun to hang out with them? Q-Tip, I think, is an unbelievable artist. I think Tribe Called Quest is probably one of my favorite groups of all time. I just think he is, you know, the consummate hip-hop artist. When I met him, he's just like, you know, inherently a, a good person. And I like that. <laughs> like the people are good people. Despite his hip-hop chop, Leo wasn't able to talk Danny Boyle into putting some of his favorite tracks on the techno five soundtrack to the beat. Danny is very rigorous about his music. Did you get to suggest anything to him? Did you I get tried to... to get an Outcast song in there. Uh, back of the Bus, you know that song? Sure. Well, no, it's called Rosa, Rosa Parks. Parks. I tried to get that in there in the sort of American scene that we have. We're the only American characters in the whole movie, so I wanted that sort of <laughs> to represent something. He couldn't get the rights or something happened, and now it's all techno. No, I don't know. <laughs> Just kidding. Leonardo DiCaprio, we got some new stuff coming out early summer. You can probably snatch some of that up and put on one of your big blockbuster movies. And you didn't want to use the Outcast song? It's a really cool song. Yeah, I, I told him about that. I'm sorry. He introduced me to kind of rap, which I always thought a bit distant from. And he introduced me to some rap stuff, which is brilliant. The Slit Rick stuff and the Outcast. And we put it in this scene, and the problem with it is, is that it's mesmerizing. You want to listen to it, and you don't listen to the actors and their dialogue. So you've got to do that, I'm afraid. So you do the whole techno thing, is that the idea? And there's a bit of techno in it, I'm Just a bit of techno, there's there's like a sheet like this out. long of credits in the match. There's some nice chilling out music as well. But I'd love to do something with the rap stuff as well. The rap. The rap. <laughs> Rap on DiCaprio has him swaggering his way into nightclubs, always accompanied by a coterie of his chumps. But Leo says it ain't so. People joke a lot about your entourage. Is it just a way to stay grounded amid all these people who instantly want to be your new best friend? I'm sure in a way, but I don't really have an entourage. It's, you know, it's all a bunch of crap. It really is. There's no posse. There is no posse. You know what I mean, they're all individuals. They're not my posse. You know what I mean? They're people that exist on their own. And they resent that sometimes. <laughs> and we don't call ourselves a posse. Do you have to be suspicious of new people in your life because of the level of Absolutely. I don't trust anybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, but <it's, laughs> no, but absolutely, you have to be suspicious. But I think that a lot of times people can definitely be deceptive, you know, even when they seem the most sincere and nice. But eventually the truth about a human being always exposes itself even in the in the most subtle and tiny little ways you know what i mean you could pick up on a little action that they do or something weird that make you say oh <laughs> oh you're really a jerk aren't you leo does place his trust in some world-class directors his next schedule project is martin scorsese's gangs of new york and dicaprio is apparently being wooed by george lucas to play anakin skywalker in the next installment of the star wars saga but will he grab the lightsaber? I like Star Wars. I thought, I, I, you know, I love, I love the, the first three, and the, the last one's all right. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have to answer that question. I have to, I have to honestly see a script. I have to see what, you know, I have to see what if it's an interesting concept, and I don't know. Leo says he's certainly thinking about it. Would you be interested in having him be your Anakin? Yeah, I think he's a wonderful actor, and um, I'm certainly that would be great. But I, I really haven't heard anything, so I don't know. <laughs> His fame and success may be an occasional burden, but it also means that at 25, Leonardo DiCaprio pretty much has free reign in Hollywood, and he's still mulling how to use that power, perhaps to direct or develop his own movie. Someday I'm probably going to try something like that, but I think I have a lot more to do as an actor and a lot, I, I, you know, I want to put in many years as, as, as being an actor and expanding myself and, you know, trying new things and trying different types of films and taking chances. Yep, it's a ranch for more money. We're allowed to travel this one? Yeah, yeah, no. But how do we get from there to there? You swim. Okay, so how, how far is it then? I don't know, one or two kilometers? Cool, cool. Not far at all. You're kind of looking forward to not having to work with water for a while? Like, this is like your third picture that has water in it. Would you like to? It's actually been a weird coincidence. I mean, even in Romeo and Juliet, there was a, some sort of a water theme. Actually, you know, I've learned to like water a little bit like to swim around and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Do you get anxious watching yourself on screen in front of a whole bunch of people like tonight? Do you get nervous or do you get excited about it? More so, I'm, I'm more nervous about what my, uh, my uh, friends and family think. I, I'd say more so than anybody else. Because, you know, I've talked about the movie to them so much. And, you know, some of them came to visit me. And, you know, it's, this is like the end product. This is like, you know, a result of like a year's work and, you know, years of dedication to the movie. So that's what I'm nervous about. Is this what Paradise feels like tonight? Absolutely not. No way. <laughs> It's <laughs>